Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and in this video, I'm going to share a method on how you can simulate or rig hair with the Geometry Nodes hair system. The way the whole process works is that you basically have your base mesh, which you can um, simulate, rig or use a shape key on. In this case, I have a cloth. And when you do that, um, you can apply the Geometry Nodes modifier, which can change this into hair strands. In this case, you can change mine to braids. That's in very simple terms how it works. Um, if you understand Geometry Nodes and you know how to get your way around it, you can create this on your own. So this is the geometry node setup that turns the polygons into hair strands. I know it may look confusing, especially to those who haven't used geometry nodes that much, but the good thing is that um, with the add-on, you have access to all these controls and even the ones from here in the end panel up here. So let me give you an example. You can turn this on from low poly to high poly, do the same for this and you have access to a bunch of all these controls. Most of these are self-explanatory, but I also included a manual you can read through to understand it a bit more. So for instance here, I can reduce the frequency, increase the width of the braids and do so much more. It's all included here. So yeah, I'm just gonna walk you through and how to install the add-on and get started. First of all, download the zip file. There's a link in the description. Don't just install the zip directly. You have to extract the files first. And in there, you'll find the add-on, bgen.py, a Blender file, bgen sample, and a PDF, bgen manual. bgen.py is the add-on, and you can move it into wherever you keep your add-ons. In Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install, then locate the folder where you kept your bgen.py and after that click on it and install okay so the bgen samples files contains all these hairstyles and some hair clumps here too um, all of them have the correct geometry notes attached to them and also some of them have the clot modifier and are ready for simulation the hair also has the materials uh, as a special material created for each hairstyle so let me just switch this to the rendered view so in the materials here it's bgen mat underscore zero one um, these controls can change the color so this one controls the roots up here and the second is towards the tip and you can change how the gradient is affected you can move it up and down like this and you can also change the color make it darker brighter and all that so yeah each hairstyle has their own materials attached to them and some other references of some clumps you can use in your own project they're ready made here uh, i'll advise you to just come here and you know append either of this or you can append everything into your own project and start using it or you can just take any of the hairstyles you think is good and use all your characters. You can also edit and build up on them. And uh, if you aren't too clear on certain things, you can read through BGen manual and it has information on how to install, on how to use it, the best ways, and also has information on the different attributes in the panels. So you can just read through if there's something you don't quite understand and this hopefully should be able to get you up to speed uh, if you don't understand anything or you have some suggestions or you want to you know um, report a bug or something just message me on my socials uh, that's down here and yeah okay now that you're all set up let's see how to use the hair system effectively the best way to use the add-on is to think of it like you're creating hairstyles with hair cards. Hair cards are used in creating hair for video game characters where the hair textures are applied on a flat polygon and then arranged in different ways for different styles. This system is like using hair cards, but instead of hair textures, you have hair strands. There are two main ways of making hair with this add-on. 
The first is the vertex to strips method, and the other is the linear mesh method. You don't need curves or hair particles. Use the vertex to strips method if you want to create longer and more dynamic moving hair. So we're looking at dreads, braids, or long curly clumps that flow in the wind. While creating this, extrude a line of vertices. But as you can see, after applying the vertex to strips, the weight painting is out of order. So the way to fix this is simple. Go into edit mode, select the first vertex on the string, shift S, cursor to select it, then select everything, go all the way to mesh, sort elements, and cursor distance, and everything will be sorted. So when you check the weight painting again, it should be linear. You need the Vertex to Strips modifier to be the first in the modifier stack for the hair to be created. The Linear Mesh method is better for shorter hair that might not need so much movement. The topology of the mesh has to be clean and have linear edge loops. You don't need the Vertex to Strips modifier for the hair to be created. Just mark the edge of where you want the hair strands to start and you're all set. Okay, I'm going to explain how the hair simulation works with this hairstyle. Uh, first of all, you're going to want to put all this in low poly mode. And yes, when you're creating the hairstyle, put all the strands that you want to be simulated or the long strands in one group. So like I've done here, I've put all the strands in this group, HS2. So in the hair sim section, you're going to want to come here and copy uh, the name of the group. I'm using a shorter name, so I don't. If I want to type it, I don't have to do too much. I can just try to type HS2. And we have it. The next thing you're going to want to do is put your collision mesh in its own collection, and of course, add the collision modifier to it, which I've done here. And the setting I use here is put the thickness on the 0.001. I always do that. I don't know why. I just get better results with that. Yeah, and here you're going to put what collection you have your collision mesh in. And in this case, the head is in hairstyles too. I'm just going to come here and copy it, and paste. So why we're doing this is because all these values or parameters affect all the hair strands in this collection. So I don't have to go into each strand and, you know, come to the physics tab and change the steps and all that manually. I can just control everything from here. So yeah, let's say we want to give this the quality. That's the um, quality steps. We want to change it to three like it is here. And I press execute. See, this is three. If I click change to another one, it's also three, also three. And so yeah, so you can use this to quickly just experiment with what values work best with the simulation. Okay, the next thing is the vertex strips, which is below this in the hair sims tab. In the vertex strips, you can control how large you want the strips to be. This affects the simulation at some points too. So if you want it to be really small, you can affect this, or if you want it to be bigger. I included this because simulation and just vertices alone, uh, it doesn't give accurate properties and you can't use collision and just single vertices. That's why I added the vertex to strips in this method. Okay, so if you go into weight paint mode, the weight paint is controlled by this float curve down here. So if you want just the roots to be uh, the pin group, you can put this here and yes, when you've chosen the weight paint you want, it affects every other strand that has this vertex to strips modifier. So this one has the same, this one has the same. If I increase it, it increases for all of them also. Yeah. And this group is mainly for the pain groups and the collision groups and all that. And the nice thing about this is when you hit execute, it executes the weight paints in all here for the pain groups. So if I go into the physics again and I go down to shape and pin group, let's say I remove this. See, as I press execute, it comes back. So it works here and it works here for the collision too. And let's say I remove the collision here and see I have hairstyles too as a collision and I click execute, it comes back here for all of them. So yeah, uh, the next thing you're going to want to do after weight painting, getting the correct weight for the hair strands, 
is to test the simulation. I'm just going to turn off the wind for now. So if I play, it just falls down. There's nothing affecting it. So I'm going to go back. Uh, I'm going to select this. Everything is parented to the hair cap. Okay, so I'm just going to select the hair cap and the mesh. Play and I can move around and physics gets affected. It's going to move back here, do it from the side, press play, Let's see, oops, move around and it gets affected. So if I pause here, I can go into the shaded mode and turn off low poly here and here and you see. So you still have the geometry nodes on top of all this. But because we applied the cloth modifier before it, it just seems like the hair is the one being simulated. Now, obviously, this add-on doesn't do magic. It's still going to be extremely slow because, see, you have 2.7 million vertices here. So it's still kind of tasking. It's retasking on lower end computers. But the good thing is you can bake the movement of the cloth modifier. So if I go here, just turn everything back to low poly and let's activate the wind. Okay, let's see if the wind works. I've already put some values. Uh, oh, by the way, these are some values that work well for me. I put 2000. Uh, if I just play, you can see how the wind affects it. Uh, forgive the hair. I, didn't just, I just made it look good from one angle just for demo purposes. If you want to, you can add more hair strands at the back to make it full if the animation needs it. So with the force field activated, I can go into the hair seams again and I can bake physics. So all the movement that is gotten from the force field can be baked into the cloth modifier. So I'm just going to say if the values are all good I like them. Okay, nice. I'm going to bake all physics. Just wait for it to go through. And we're good. So if I play, it's playing really well. See, 25 frames. So you have this embedded. Uh, I can switch it back. The thing is, if I switch it back out of low poly, it's still going to be slow. And that's because it's moving thousands or hundreds of thousands of vertices or even millions of vertices at the same time. So it's going to be slow. See, it went back all the way down to five frames per second. And you would want to get the animation right with the low poly. Then when that is all good and simulation or the animation is correct, you just turn it back to high poly and export the animation or render the animation, sorry. And that's the way it works. So we're just going to look at it or pick a frame that we like with some nice movement and we can just turn it back. And yeah. So yeah, so this is seemingly good. Um, guess hair simulation we're kind of faking it here but i mean it's the only option i have discovered at the moment um i'm sure it's going to be better eventually when blender develops the actual simulation for the geometry nodes but for now this is the system i've created hope you like it and yeah you can use it in very creative ways um and please if you find a way to use it that's really interesting for instance if you rig your hair uh just share with me on twitter uh, my Twitter handle displays somewhere in the screen. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And thank you for showing interest in this add-on. I have created a time lapse for the creation of this hair, and I'm going to link it after this video. I uh, hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, you know, just ask me on Twitter or on Instagram, and I'll be happy to help. And yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day.